Hello, everybody. My name is Judah Hardy, and I am incredibly excited to be here today to help reveal the nominations for the BAFTA Games Awards 2023. Now, if you don't know too much about BAFTA, BAFTA is an independent uh, arts charity celebrating its 76th year and you probably know it mostly for its work you know within kind of tv and film but also games if you didn't know already so since about 2004 we've had the bafta games awards recognizing global excellence from uh, the games industry and uh, how it kind of works is basically the uh, it's voted for by bafta members but the juries themselves uh, come from all different avenues of the gaming sphere so basically if you can think of a job within games I guarantee there'll be a whole bunch of those people on the juries. That's kind of how it breaks down. So today's nominations are going to celebrate excellence from within all of those categories. Uh, and, you know, just a general celebration of the most innovative and cutting edge entertainment in the world. We know this. All right. Um, so BAFTA's, you know, goal is to showcase all of this and to also, you know, inspire the next generation of talent, you know, to basically say, we want to work in games. They want to help you out to do that and uh, help you, you know, kind of achieve your creative potential. So if you, you know, you like the idea of working in games, maybe you already work in games, definitely go over and check out BAFTA.org. OK, uh, and also make sure if you're kind of new to the industry, if you're a bit of an industry newbie, go to uh, go to BAFTA.org and check out the BAFTA Connect, because that is all about um, supporting uh, people who are just starting to get into the industry uh, and helping them out and kind of making connections and stuff. And as someone who's been you know, a BAFTA member for a while, um, I cannot recommend it enough. It is super supportive and it is really, really great for making connections, which let's be honest, a lot of jobs are all about that, finding the right people you want to work with and who are going to help and you know support your career. So, okay, enough talking about BAFTA. You know what's going down. You guys want to get to the nominations. Um, right, now, what's happening today is we are revealing effectively the finalists, the nominations for each of these different categories. Now, they're going to be announced, the winners rather, are going to be announced on the 30th of March when we do our live uh, BAFTA Games Awards, which is going to be streamed exclusively on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash BAFTA. And to really kind of dig through all of this, you know, treasure trove of games. And to be honest with you, I don't envy a lot of the juries this year. It has been an absolutely stellar year for games. There's going to have definitely been some very, very difficult conversations had in those juries. So to pick through all of these categories, I decided to bring in some help, quite frankly, because I can't do it alone. Uh, so please uh, welcome to the show. Our, yeah, our panelists who are going to be helping us uh, get through that. So we have got Tubbo, Captain Puffy, Okara, we've got Leah, and we've got Sharice, all of which are incredible streamers with kind of playing lots of different varieties of games as well. So we're going to get some interesting insight on their perspectives. Guys, how are you doing? Everyone doing okay? I'm good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hi gang. This is this is so exciting. I'm very excited to have lots of this is just I can't believe it's like a job. We're just gonna talk about games. We'd do this anyway, even if no one was streaming it, just because, you know. <laughs> um so before we get into the main nominations, I just want to remind you of the EE game of Chatters. the year. I love uh, so gaming, now this is voted for by you guys. I mean, I guess it's just there's just so many categories that we need a little bit of help. You know, we need you guys to pick the EE game uh, of the year. So um the nominations are vote for this so we've got Elden Ring we've got God of War Ragnarok we've got Horizon Forbidden West Immortality Marvel Snap and Stray now voting is open right now so go over to ee.co.uk forward slash BAFTA games and make your vote count we need your help we want to know what's your favorite game of the year right I believe we should probably get to it because we do have an uh, quite a large amount of nominations to get through and lots of opinions, I believe, uh, also to get involved in this from uh, from our wonderful panelists. So the first uh, block of nominations, and we're going to kind of do them together a little bit here. So this first group basically honours the people who truly bring games to life, you know, through their incredible art direction, sound design, animation and music composition. Oh, God. OK, right. I feel the pressure a little bit. Right. OK. Now. <laughs> the nominees for animation are Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Sifu and Stray. And moving swiftly on to artistic achievement, we've got A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Immortality, Pentiment and Tunic. For audio achievement, 
We have Plague Tale Requiem, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Metal Hellsinger, Stray and Tunic and for music. We have Plague Tale Requiem, Cuphead the Delicious Last Course, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Stray and Tunic. Now, I know that's a lot to kind of take in. We just wanted to announce our nominations and now we're just going to go to a little bit slower. So let's take a quick look at our animation and remind ourselves what's in that category. So my wonderful panellists, uh, in terms of games you played this year, was there anything that kind of really struck you for animation? Anyone want to hop in on that? Uh, the Star Wars Lego games are always very... I'm a big fan of Star Wars and also big fan of cat game. I like the cat game. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. It was amazing. It was really, really good. Um, let's take also an artistic achievement. Let's just remind ourselves what was in um, that category too. So yeah, some similar ones there. Um, Obviously, there are some beautiful games that kind of blew us away uh, within this. I mean, this is the kind of like jaw dropping. My goodness, I can't believe someone made this moment. Um, for you guys, panelists, what kind of made your jaw drop with just like how incredible it looked? I feel like the God of War games always oh, yeah. managed to do that. Yeah, God of War is gorgeous. Elden Ring as well was absolutely stunning. Like it just I mean, terrifying. But yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and Pentiment, uh, the whole art style in Pentiment is so it's so unique and uh, it really stands out. It's got that medieval uh, artwork style thing and it's just gorgeous. I mean, I, we didn't know that we needed to play Pentiment or this was an artistic, uh, like an art, like kind of style that we wanted, but now we know. Absolutely. Right? Okay, audio achievement, any kind of standouts from there? So this is just for audio, obviously uh, not for the music itself. So just more kind of, I mean, God of War, just even the sound of God of everything. Yeah, sounds all the little yeah. meows and stray. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Metal Hellsinger, the way that they brought uh, like so a bunch good. of huge metal artists together the, the, to collaborate yes, on that was cool. incredible. And the way that the music all builds up uh, with the rhythm shooter is really amazing. So I do love that. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a small game. Um, music. Okay. Music's one of those funny ones, because if you notice it, then it's probably not great, right? Mm. <laughs> it should just sort of seemingly bad. But then with Cuphead, obviously, they I make this Cuphead kind of... Cuphead is so good, though. Bespoke hot jazz. <laughs> Junior's it just makes really the game just that much more too. iconic, I feel. Yeah. Mm, it's very stylized. Yeah. 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 Was, I mean, there was a lot of really, really great, great music for games this year. Um, I mean, what, any kind of shockers there for you guys? No? Mm. All sounds kind of fairly... I, I, so I, think, I, I think it deserved to cool. be there. Yeah. 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 It's a hard year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really... Cause, Obviously, you know, they come from a very, very long list of game and then they go into another long list and then they have to pick these six. So it is really, yeah, I would not. These are some difficult conversations, I think, in, uh, in the jury. Do you know how many sure. total games were submitted to be nominated? It's like hundreds. It's hundreds <laughs> of games, depending on the category as well. There are a lot. Like, obviously, there'll be a lot more in some categories as opposed to others. But yeah, there's sometimes when you get to see the list, you're a bit like, who was it? Wow. <laughs> you yeah, know, some... I, it's really nice seeing the variety. Uh, like the, you got like Tunic, which is a really nice like isometric uh, sort of puzzly style game. You got Cute. like yeah. Metal Hellsinger, like a rhythm based shooter game. And you've got uh, God of War, like an incredible narrative RPG sort of game. Uh, like there's, and there's just a really huge variety there. Pentiment, which is like a sort of walking simulator, um, like narrative based experience. It's just, it's really, really nice seeing lots of different styles of games getting nominated in the same categories as well. It's very... I was about to say, it's crazy how they're also unique, but they do cover a lot yeah. of the same category over and over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've just heard, heard from Baffer that actually it's 250 games. Wow. Wow. 45 nominated. Did, did, yeah. Were there even that many games released this year? <laughs> yes, there's so many video games. Okay, well, this is what happens there's when more you There's more than Minecraft. Hey, Tomo. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love Minecraft. I just, I like, it's we, Minecraft we nominated. We we know, we know. Oh my days. Um, yeah, so there's some great ones there. Why don't we um, move on to the next batch, shall we? So um, this one, now this is kind of a really interesting category, I think, because this this next category kind of like looks at sort of what goes on behind to like make a game effectively like come to life. Uh, you know, some incredible people working behind the scenes, maybe things you don't always necessarily notice, but are what really, you know, bring the game to life. And, and technical talent as well is kind of mixed into this. And without any of these categories, none of these games would have been that good. So let's have a little look at uh, these ones. So this is kind of like the fundamentals, really, of games, right? So first up, here are your nominations for, I know this is one everyone wants to know about, is uh, for narrative. Oh. So yeah, Playtale Requiem. 
Citizen Sleeper, ooh, God of War Ragnarok, Immortality, wow, yeah, 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 Pentiment and Stray. <laughs> um, for technical achievement, we've got Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Immortality, The Last of Us Part One, and Stray. And game design, Cult of the Lamb, oh yeah, Elden oh. Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Tunic, and Vampire Survivors. Okay, <laughs> let's let's start off with narrative. Let's take a quick look back at what that category was. So yeah, Plague Tale, Citizen Sleeper. Um, what's everyone's kind of first kind of gut reactions on this? Does this look like a really good selection of games here? Again, yeah, the variety really choice for this one. Uh, yeah, it's hard to avoid the like monolith that is God of War Ragnarok because it just was stunning in every single way. But you, I mean, uh, if you've not seen um, Immortality, it's a really fascinating like full motion yeah. video style game. Um, very, very unique, and the way that they use uh, the like video clips to build a narrative and, and the mechanics of that is really, really special. I've never seen anything like it, so. Yeah, I started playing it and then suddenly it felt like three days had gone by <laughs> and I kept like zooming in on like teacups uh, to find like extra clips. But again, it's by Sam Barlow, who obviously won uh, three BAFTAs, I think in wow. 2018 wow. for her story. So, you know, I think it, it was very, it, it's almost like Lynchian at points if you get into it. It's mm -hmm. um. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, technical achievement. I mean, this is, there's some oh, pretty technical stuff that's gosh, going on in all of these. In these. Yeah, there's loads. Yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, complicated. Horizon <laughs> Forbidden West. West. It, sorry, no, I was just going to say Horizon Forbidden West. Like, we haven't really mentioned it all. And that one, like, what an incredible yeah, game that, game that was is as well. amazing. It just built it's up very made polished. the first one so good and improved, improved it in every way. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at game design. Um, Cherise, what do you, what do you think for, get, for game design? Game design. I've just found Cult of Lamb. I've just been watching my friend actually play what? this. What? Only now? L literally about two days ago, my friend oh, Harry, she was playing it, and I, I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I love the design of it. It's, it's pretty spectacular. It's pretty, pretty perfect. Um, yeah, it's so different. Yeah, and then I mean, even then, something like Vampire Survivors, which you know, like on the surface, if anyone hasn't played it, they're like, "Why is this here? Why is this? <laughs> what is this?" But actually, it's an incredibly smart game. So, how, how are we feeling about these? I mean, some pretty good standout. I, this is going to be a really tough one for people to. Mm. to I am on. very happy that Call of the Lamb made it in, though. Yeah. yeah, I bought two of the figurines today for that game. Ooh. It's, it's so cute. <laughs> it's so, so much cute. cute merch. It's, I mean, you, you've got the shelf there. You need to keep yeah. it well stocked with. I have a plushie somewhere up there. It's just there's too many of them now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next selection. Okay. So. Basically, this this to me is like the heart of the game. Like you got all the kind of stuff around it. This is all about the performance. I mean, you know, this is the thing that you know, without it, especially for kind of narrative games, stuff like that, you gotta sell it. You gotta you gotta sell it to me. So this is we're gonna be looking at performer in a supporting role and performer in a leading role. Let's take a look. <gasps> performer in a supporting role. Okay, wow. so yes, Adam J. Harrington, who's obviously Sindri in God of War Ragnarok. Uh, Alison J. Who is um, it's Alva in Horizon Forbidden West. Oh, Charlotta Mohlin from immortality plays the one. Oh my goodness i literally there's a bit i i no, i need a whole show just to talk about <laughs> that um daniel this city obviously plays freya in god of war ragnarok layla delion hayes um who plays uh angra boda and uh ryan hurst who is of course thor there's Impossible. so much god of war ragnarok I, it's oh, i mean it's so good though <laughs> they are all this i mean yeah, the long list was a lot of God of War. It's a lot of God of War, I'm not gonna lie. But I mean, there's so many great, I mean, as actors, what amazing, like, it's not how, I think actors, well, I think everyone kind of thought that way about games where it was like, oh, you know, it's just like, and like now it's like, you get to, especially if it's, it's a game where you actually have options, you get to play out all mm. the different options of the character. What, what actor gets to do that? Yeah. You know, oh, if this, Really interesting. Anyway, sorry. Performer and leading role, I digress. I'm sure there's people watching who want to know. Right. Okay. We've got Alan Messer from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Charlotte McBurney from Plague Tale Requiem. Christopher Judge from God of War Ragnarok. Man Engaged from Immortality. Siobhan Williams from The Quarry. And Sonny Sodic from God of War Ragnarok. I mean... Ooh. The Quarry. Sleeper oh, pick. Actually, really yes. incredible performances in The Quarry. Really cool. Yeah. It was really... It's really it's like good. a movie game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do we feel kind of about that? What were any of these characters like tugging on your heartstrings? Were there any ones that like made you like cry a little? 
little sad tear or anything. Tubbo, did you cry at any games this year? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I cried at so many games. Um, uh, there, I was, um, there was especially a... Uh, the quarry I was actually terrifying. I'm not very good with horror was... games, but... Yeah, it's really, really scary. Yeah, no, yeah. They, some of the scary games they 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 bring me to tears. I'm not good at scary games. I don't I don't cope well. I don't. I, mean, I don't think most of us do. You just end up like realizing that your shoulders have been like yeah, tensest. <laughs> for, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Sh Sharice, were there any kind of performances in there that kind of really spoke to you? Um, I haven't played God of War. Um, <gasps> however, I have. This is now on your to do list. <laughs> yeah, I have okay. been looking at my friend who started a Let's Play. Um, yeah. And the graphics are amazing. So hearing all of the actors, like it's it's amazing. Yeah, and I, and I think as well, obviously, because it's like you know the second part in this version of like everything that's being. There's just so much like there's, you know, like alliances check, you know, try not mm. to give too many spoilers, but like things really shift in terms of like how they interact with each other. So it's like in terms of performance, there's a lot going on, like m way more than the first game, like for Definitely. sure. It sounded super fun to like perform. <laughs> like there's just, it's uh, there's so much nuance in all the performances. It blew me away. It was so Like, exciting. I hate you. I love you. We're friends. <laughs> no, we are. Yeah. Oh, you're the worst. I'm going to kill you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. You know, <laughs> I mean, better than that obviously which is why they're not that was great actors. you might be in the yeah. next one i mean i should really have been freya obviously. <laughs> i hate you you're the worst <laughs> Kratos. sorry uh right <laughs> moving on um let's go on to um this next category which is all about celebrating new stories new ways of telling and games that you know keep us coming back for more year after year so we're gonna take a look at the nominees for oh i like this category debut game Mm. Look at that. Dusk Falls, The Case of the Golden Isle. Oh my goodness, I love it. Oh. Stray, <laughs> Trombone Champ, yes. Sleeper Smash, uh, Tunic, and Vampire Survivors. That is a great category. Uh, Game Beyond Entertainment. Let's have a look. Okay, whoever was on this jury, wow. Okay, these are great. Citizen Sleeper, Endling Extinction is Forever, Gibbon Beyond the Trees, I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist, Not for Broadcast, and We'll Always Have Paris. That is a stellar category. And also anyone watching this should just go and play all of them. Um, <laughs> evolving game. Yeah, okay. So I feel like this is this is some of your remit out here. Uh, definitely, we've got some Apex Legends, Dreams, The Elder Scrolls Online, Final Fantasy XIV Online, Forza Horizon 5 and No Man's Sky. This is just like the Leah category. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's take a quick look. Debut game. Um, okay. Oof. The case of the Golden Idol, which, because I was obsessed with uh, the return of the Opera Din, and it very much has that kind of vibe. Oh, does to it? it? You're convincing me to play it now because I loved Opera Din. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's it's like a proper detective game where you have like almost Ooh. like little notebooks where you like make notes, and it's like you oh. look at something in someone's pocket, and you're like, well, it can't be him because he said that bit of dialogue here, and then oh, okay. words that oh, key, oh. and you like I'm solve in. the mystery, I'm and in. it's like, <laughs> and it's it looks basically like some sort of like weird. Vermeer paintings if someone had done them in like um like Microsoft Draw or whatever you know what I mean like no sorry Microsoft Paint yeah <laughs> like so look at Vermeer like painter and yeah Mike, it looks really weird um there's loads of really great ones in there like debut game I mean Stray the Stray is huge <sighs> mm. boom I cat game Stray. Tubbo how do you feel about cat game I love a cat I have a ginger cat myself <laughs> my dentist <laughs> loves cats my doctor <laughs> loves cats Everyone loves cats. I love the cat game. I, I resonate with the cat game and I love gaming and Among Us, but most importantly, the cat game. Good. That was a very good, well-rounded summary. That was Thank like you. if you're trying to write a paper at like 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you don't have to games. come at me like that, bro. I think they're good. Um, so in terms of like uh, Game Beyond Entertainment, so there's a lot Oof. of kind of smaller games on here. Were there any ones that you guys actually had a chance to play? Because they are kind of on the, yeah. Did you guys have a... Well, Always Have you know Paris is such a sweet, but like sad game. Yeah. yeah. It's about dementia, right? Yeah, it's so yeah. heartbreaking, but it's such an interesting concept because I haven't seen another game do that before. I think really interesting. And then, yeah, not for broadcast, oh, not where you're for basically broadcast. fascinating. Censoring. Yeah. yeah. Not you for can't know those. It's the, I'm going to try the only, that It's the only game that has the tag propaganda simulator. <laughs> I think maybe the only one that might ever continue having that, like, <laughs> I in mean, that genre. We're living in that now. It's just they're being honest and upfront yeah. about it. Um, Very interesting. Okay, evolving game. Okay, Leah, I feel like I'm going to come to you for this. <laughs> like, you <laughs> have literally stated half of these uh, as your favorites. So, I certainly uh, have a bias for Forza Horizon 5 um, because I do host the Forza Monthly show, but it's uh, what a game. Like, they are just 
it, they add stuff to it every single month. Like it's it's wild. There's yeah. new cars all the time. The new DLCs announced. Final Fantasy fourteen online. Like uh, uh, I can't talk enough about how amazing that game is. It's like my cozy <laughs> game. Twenty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and Apex Legends, you always come back to because it's just fun. It's just it never stops being yeah. fun. It's Uh, Elder Scrolls, on? oh my god, absolutely in love with that game, so I'm really happy to see that there. Yeah, I keep meaning yeah. to get more into dreams, and I always mean to do it, and then I don't do it, but then I keep seeing things that people make, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> it's really cool. Anyway, this is, we don't have enough time, we just don't have enough time to get through all this. Right, okay, next category, I feel like we're, otherwise we're just, yeah, we won't get through them all. Um, right now, so everything like in this next sort of like bunch of nominations is kind of a bit of a mix. We've got like family games, we've got multiplayer, we've got new IPs, and also best of British. So let's let you know who the nominees are for best family game. Let's take a look. <gasps> Disney Dreamlight Valley, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker, the Skywalker Saga, that famous Lego Skywalker, um, <laughs> Mario and Rabbit, Sparks of Hope, Nintendo Switch Sports, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. Okay, good selection there. Multiplayer. Um, this is an interesting mix, actually. Look at this. Oh, yeah, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, uh, FIFA, of course, Elden Ring, Ooh. Overwatch 2, Splatoon 3, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, original property. These, this is my gem. I like people who make new things. Let's do new <laughs> stuff. Uh, <laughs> Citizen Sleeper, Cult of the Lamb, Elden Ring, Sifu, Stray, and Vampires of the Light. What? Look at the diverse. <laughs> All of those games are completely different. <gasps> Definitely. Like, they couldn't be more different. That's brilliant. Um, and then we've got British game. Oh, look, British Smash, look at this. Citizen Sleeper, Oli Oli World, Roller Drome, Total War, Warhammer 3, uh, Two Point Campus, and Vampire Survivors. What's Two Point Campus about? Two Point Campus? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like by the people who make like Two Point Hospital and all that kind of stuff. So it's sort of like a little kind of light sim. Right. Uh, Ooh, but you're on a. Fun. But you're like running a university. It's a university, right? Mm. Yeah, that would make sense. Campus. Wow, well, school. Um, okay, family <laughs> game. Um, any of those you are fans of? Kirby um, was we... amazing. Yeah, he could eat everything. And I love when he ate everything. that car. That was awesome. When he ate that car. I should have played this. If this you is about playing everything, he I could didn't. become stairs. He could eat the stairs. And also, I mean, Nintendo Switch sports kind of just brought back the nostalgia from years ago oh, that we've yeah. all been missing. True, very, very true. I like the, I mean, you sold me on Kirby on just eats everything. <laughs> I'm just into that. He does. That sounds great. He does. Yeah. He, like, he, he, he sucked on the car and it <laughs> consumed it and became it. Like he just kind of like overlaid it. Like, like when you put a blanket over a car, but it was his body. Yeah, yeah I, I'm into that. Okay, <laughs> multiplayer. Let's take a quick look. Oh, I mean, man. a nice little, it's a really diverse little selection. It's not like what specifically you would think. No, I mean, people underestimate Splatoon 3 hugely. Like the multiplayer scene game, on Splatoon yeah. 3 is wild. And it's such a fun game. Uh, and obviously Overwatch too. They just, you know, Overwatch, but even better. <laughs> you can't really go wrong with that. Yeah, Splatoon is great. It's always been great. Yeah. It's always consistently great. I played Splatoon yes. for the first time yesterday, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that was my, my first time playing Splatoon was yesterday. And yeah, yeah, I think the game has a steep learning curve, but I'm sure it's very rewarding <laughs> when you get good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, I think because it looks like it should be like dead simple, but actually yeah, there's a lot but, mm, more to uh, it. An yeah, added yeah. layer of complexity and motion control. Best games. <laughs> yeah, get used fully. To. People are right, original how popular it is oh, as well. Uh, yeah, it was it's... literally the fastest selling game in Japan, which surpassed Pokemon really? Black and White, which Splatoon is wild. Yeah. Was... yeah, Splatoon 3. <laughs> like, as what? Well. It's so big in Japan. Deserved. Big in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, original property. Now, let's take a quick look at this. So, this is some like fresh, fresh meat. Um, I mean, out the oh, gate. God. Hello. So good. Uh, any faves in there? They're all um, just so shows? different. Yeah. Yeah, personally, it's going to be stray for me. I haven't played a game anything like it. It's True. so different, so unique. Cara, what, what's your kind of um, fave from that? I just love Stray and Cult of the Lamb so much. Elden Ring, I, I love it. It's beautiful, but it's just a bit too difficult for me. <laughs> it's quite obtuse in its learning curve. What's Elden Ring um, about? Oh, God, really? Oh. Oh, uh, sorry, my, mean, Minecraft is plot, right? my Minecraft is showing. No, 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 no. Um, I mean, what? How do you? It's just, yeah, it's uh, really sort of punishing. Doesn't really explain anything. Just really sort difficult of a boss fights. Game. Yeah, this is really not the best way of explaining Elden Ring. It's almost similar <laughs> to like Dark Souls, Tabo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very much kind of that sort of like Bloodborne sort of thing. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's renowned for, you know, you get extra gold stars if you complete it because oh, it's difficult. exciting. Yeah. Uh, British game. Let's take a look at that. Ooh, yeah. 
uh, roller drone. I found, I loved it, but I found the learning curve for me was a little bit uh, steep at the start. But I've seen people do some amazing things in that game who are far more dexterous than I. <laughs> it looks very chaotic. <laughs> You're doing it's like yeah. an action game where you're doing tricks, right? Where, where you're skating around, but you're also fighting enemies at the same time. It's so like Tony Hawk's, but like with guns. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like, I, I couldn't do Tony Hawk's that well. Like, don't give me another thing to do. Um, yeah, so Vampire Survivors, did any of you guys get into that? No. I haven't played that one, but I really did enjoy Ali Ali World. Also, just like ah. so cute and sweet, the graphics. Yeah, there's some really amazing. It's really varied. I'm yeah. super well, well done, juries. You pick some good stuff. Vampire Survivors was made by one person as well, which is wild. Wow. <laughs> and it got baked from people posting YouTube walkthroughs. But like for a single person game, like that's an achievement in itself. So <laughs> just having yeah. a nomination as well. Really cool. I mean, I think it's always. Well, I'm quite. I think I'm quite snobby when it comes to games. Like if, if there's like an aesthetic of it, well, like, oh, I feel like I've seen that before. I can be a little yeah. bit, little bit snobby about it. I'm like, uh, same with like Signalis. I was like, I know what this game is. Mm. I know what it's going to be. And then you play it, and you're like, oh wow. <sighs> Shut up, Julia. You should have <laughs> never said anything out loud. Be quiet, your mouth. Um, yeah. I feel like we are basically got one category away, which is the biggest one. Ooh. And there's probably some people watching who want to know what this one is. So, I mean, it's it's the biggest one. It's the brass ring. Brass ring? Brass ring. Brass <laughs> ring of the BAFTAs, as it were. It is best game. Let's find out who the nominations are. Oh my god. Boom. Ooh. Those are some meaty, meaty choices of that. Cult of the Lamb, Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Marvel Snap, Stray, and Vampire Survivors. Okay, let's go through all of you one by one. Okay, right. Tubbo, you got any read on this? What's all right. Guys, I know yes. which one's gonna win this one. Okay, okay. you're gonna do a prediction. What's it gonna you, be? This is I can see into the future, I'm telling you. Yes. My dentist, he would never let me down. Stray's winning this. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Your dentist is a My dentist is a massive fan. stray fan. He's a massive stray okay. fan. And, and you base all of your opinions on Yeah, I mean, hey, dentist. I take his medical advice and his gaming advice. Interchangeable. I mean, it does save time. <laughs> it does. Uh, <laughs> Leah, what's your read on that? What one are you kind of rooting for to him? Oh, God, it's so hard uh, between Elden Ring and, and God of War for me. They were just so incredible. But I think God of War for me was a more of an all-rounder. So I'm thinking that's probably, yeah, okay. if we're looking on the whole, uh, Charisse, what do you think? Uh, for me, it's going to be Stray. It's the only game that's ever made me cry. So, oh, <laughs> what? Did, you, did you play The Last of Us? I cried like three times. I, no, if you I've the DLC. seen my friends. I feel like when I watch people play a game, I'm less likely to be emotional. But then if I play the game myself, it, I take it in more. Stray, five I'm... minutes and I was crying. <laughs> Cara, what do you think? What's your kind of faves then? I'm rooting for Cults of the Lamb and Stray, but I think the winner's going to be Elden Ring, just because obviously there's already been a God of War and Elden Ring just, just stands out so much on its own. I think I think that's that's a tough that's a, I mm, I don't want to predict. That's you have that's to. You made tricky... us predict. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not allowed fair. to, right? Um uh, I don't know. I think like personally for me, I mean by this point, this is all, you know. I think for me, I, I loved Stray from start to finish. I don't know if I, I didn't realize how much I needed to play a game exactly like that, exactly that mm -hmm. moment in time. And I think sometimes it's really hard to, you know, when like it, where you are in your life, when you play a game impacts so heavily how mm -hmm. you connect with it. And definitely mm -hmm. that happened with Stray. Of course, Elden Ring, I'm terrible at it. Um, <laughs> God of War, Ragnarok, again, I think, you know, you're right. It's like a massively well-rounded game. It's added to kind of what's sort of gone before. But to be honest with you, these are all, even Marvel Snap, I'm not a card I was about player, to say, that was, say. that was a bit rogue mm. that came out of nowhere, that one. But it's mm. really good. It is. Like, it's about? a really, f I, you know when a card game's trying to teach you and I'm like, stop trying to teach me. I know you're trying to teach me. I don't <laughs> like it. Stop it. It's not fun. Um, it's not that. It's all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I'm so good at this. It's great. It's accidentally definitely worth a play. But wow, there's some, uh, any of those is a deserving win mm. for sure. Uh, how are we feeling for this year's BAFTAs then? What, what do we reckon? I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Good there's just too many good options almost. Yeah, it's a and they're lot also of like so vast of different categories that like I don't know what to pick because there's so much variety. Yeah, Sharice, what do you think? I feel like each game is so different and stands out like completely on their own, so it's really hard to like pick between in each category because they're all just so good in their own way. And so it's just it's if they were really similar, it makes it a lot easier to like compare. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Leah, Leah, what do you think? Yeah, I, I mean, you've got the AAA games, you got. 
Horizon, you've got God of War, you've got Elden Ring, and obviously they're going to always be nominated. And they should be because they're incredible. But to see them going up against, to see a one-man game like Vampire Survivors go this far uh, mm. is awesome. So every, I think that shows how much there are so many people out there who definitely uh, still enjoy that, like, retro style gaming uh who are still like very much like wanting to see it in the mainstream and, and that's really cool i just find it amazing when there's just like a one person game developer where i just think like what have i been doing in my life i couldn't even make a <laughs> game made so like many games, games. Julia. i could have made so many games i've wasted you could have been in this this lineup here. <laughs> I've wasted why would you bring that up and one final next thought year. from next oh. <laughs> uh, so my guy, it's um I've got a I've got a water bottle and a pet no. And, right, so, Tabo, what's your final thought from you and your dentist? What do my you think? My final thought. Well, if I was going to take my dentist medical opinion <laughs> into consideration for this gaming award show, um, yeah, I would have to say, yeah, I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of those 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 big boy games being nominated for loads of different things, and I got to admit, yeah. I, me and my dentist, we go we're like this. So I've always <laughs> got to be rooting for probably the ones that aren't nominated for like five or six categories. I want to go for the ones which are nominated for their category and do theirs the best. You know, I yeah. want to go. I want to go mean, for the the hidden gems. Yeah, so that's a really good point actually because I've got one final question for all of you, which is okay. So we've kind of got you know this big this big list of like different games. Uh, are there any games on there that you've just seen that now you think that you haven't played that now you're like, oh, actually, I want to play. Uh, Leah, what do you reckon? Is there anything on there you're like, oh, actually? Oh, well, the one you mentioned of uh, the the one that Curse won. of the Golden yeah, Isle. I'm, I'm gonna download that immediately. <laughs> that looks incredible. Absolutely. Play it on Steam Deck. Sharice, what do you reckon? What are you gonna play? Is there anything? I would like spell? to try Elden Ring and God of War. Ooh, two. Mm. I mean, you can't go wrong. It's I very mean, outside I mean... the box for me, but I do love the graphics for them. And Cara, what do you reckon? I want to try our Dreams. Help. Uh, as you said, there's so much that you could do with it, and I've seen it, but I haven't given it a go. But maybe, maybe today's my day. <laughs> I mean, and also as well, because you can create something like totally unique and then that's, that always makes streaming. I mean, I don't know. How about see you like it? Minecraft. Yeah. I, I, I love Minecraft. Yes. Yes. What about Minecraft? <laughs> Getting on <Dreams>. to <laughs> Wait, was Minecraft nominated? <laughs> no. Well, it's not, it's not got through. Oh, uh, oh, oh, okay. No. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. No, no, I mean, well, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. I understand. I understand. Okay. Was there anything else, any of the games there that you, that you're going to play? Yeah, I should, I'll probably go check out the majority of them. I have not seen, there's a lot of ones that I thought, wow, those are games that I should definitely, definitely know about if they're this, this prestigious <laughs> and fancy to win an award. I should probably well, BAFTA go, nominated. Yeah, if, they, if they're BAFTA nominated, I should probably go play them. So I thought I'd go just go play all of them probably <laughs> and check them out amazing well look thank you guys so so much for joining us and uh you know thank you to all of the nominees every single one of the games uh, and not just the ones that we've uh, announced today because it really was a incredibly difficult thing to whittle them down um so don't forget to cast your vote for the ee game of the year award just go to ee.co.uk forward slash bafta games we do need to know what your opinions are to pull that one through and uh yeah make sure you're back to watch the baftas on the 30th of march uh, exclusively on twitch which is twitch tv forward slash BAFTA, literally where you are right now and of course we got frankie ward has been announced as our wonderful ceremony host so she will be there we will be there we are so excited to have you along for the ride it's going to be an absolutely stellar year and stellar celebrations all around for this year's BAFTA games awards all that remains to say is just to give you a little snippet of all the gaming goodness that there is from this year we will see you again on the 30th bye bye everybody bye wake up sleeper bye, Welcome to the City of Souls. It's all that matters is that you are safe. Is this kind of like the all-time scariest kind?
don't know. This is my first cop. Standing close-ups, Miss Perkins, you can flirt with Carl now. Okay. <laughs>